good morning everyone uh, welcome to the class on operation research so uh, till now uh, we were discussing about the basic understanding of what operation research is all about okay and in that uh, we have started discussing the history of operation research how the subject came in picture okay during second world war the reason of of the subject was being introduced in the real market scenario to save uh, save a uh, uk government from the crisis situation how the subject actually helped the uk government to save themselves from the crisis situation and then uh, we learned in the subject the phase of operation research how this actually this subject is being implemented in the day to day uh, examples where uh, probably by using this subject uh, any problems any problems can be solved by formulating that problem in the form of mathematical model so that part uh, we have learned so the basic idea when that whenever we have a given situation uh, we create an uh, linear programming approach for that given situation okay and under that linear programming approach when we create uh, for a given situation so we have learned the general form of of writing and linear programming problem okay so when we are when we are learning the general approach of writing a linear programming problem uh, where uh, we express our objective function uh, we talk about our decision variables our constraints our non negativity restriction ultimately the idea here is to formulate the given problem uh, in the form of mathematical model and these mathematical models whenever we talk about they should be they should be simplified representation of the operation which we are talking about and and in this in this model mathematical model what we talk about they should they should come up uh, with the with the the terms of the features uh, in of a problem that that model is considering with having the less assumptions as much as it can and whatever the factors which are responsible in the term of decision variable we need to figure out the significant relationship and how they may or may not impact the future answer for that model and and in case if they are interdependent how that interdependency can be minimized that also need to be discussed and and whenever we talk about a good model okay the this the good model should have minimum assumptions okay that they should have minimum variables so that uh, that the model is simple and coherent and that model should be flexible to adapt to the changes okay uh, so that this the same model can be applied in many many places okay and that that model should be capable in taking to account the new formulation okay without much change in the actual frame of reference so all that we have discussed we have discussed about uh, the different problems we have discussed this problem we have discussed this problem of formulation of lpp we have discussed this problem okay we have discussed couple of problem which came in your bca exam okay so which are important for you so uh, so probably you can you can would have got a fair picture about how to formulate a linear programming problem okay the other problems like from problem number 4 okay uh, these these problems problem number 4 to i think 10 problems are there 4 to 10 so this for this problem 4 to 10 i'll make a separate video uh, where i'll explain you uh, the the lpp form of these problem if you get time you can uh, i'll i'll forward you these questions to you people you can sit and try to form an lpp problem for these kind of questions that that will be up to you okay so i gave you a fair picture about what lpp is all about how to formulate an equation under that situation i don't think you will face any problem whenever you see such kind of pro uh, the problems related to lpp they are much more easier to be understand you can simply read the problem like there's a the problem number 10 a pro company has three operational uh, department weaving processing and packing with the capacity to produce three different types of clothes namely shooting setting and wooling a uh, woolen yielding a profit of 2 rupees 4 rupees and 3 rupees meter respectively okay so when when we talk about shooting here if i talk about shooting 
in then we have a uh, shirting okay and then we have woolen okay so we have suiting shirting and we have woolen and the profit is given to you the profit per unit is given to you that is 2 rupees 4 rupees and 3 rupees so if you write your maxima what would be your maxima of z so that would be 2x1 plus 4x2 plus 3x3 okay there you have to define what is x1 what is x2 what is x3 i think you know i think by this time if you have uh, gone through all my previous sessions uh, based on this question model you would have easily understood how to formulate the problem because the objective of a firm uh, is always to maximize the variables uh, if the variables are revenue or profit or to minimize their cost okay so one here it is given one meter of shooting requires three min minutes of weaving so then the process is giving uh, this weaving you can make a column so that one meter shooting requires three minute of weaving okay and 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 two minute of processing so you can make a different a uh, column for that a uh, two minute of 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 processing and one minute of packing similarly one meter of shirting require one meter of shirting require four meter four minutes in weaving so uh, when we talk about shirting it require four minute in weaving okay so it require four minute in weaving one minute in processing and three minute in packing while one min meter of woolen required three minute in each department so in a week the total run time for each department is 60 14 80 hours of weaving here they are given in hour so you can convert them into minutes okay so 60 into 60 3600 minutes so the constraint if you write your constraint if you write your constraint i think you can you are in that position if i give you a time you can easily write these con these things your constraint for if you want to write the constraint for your a first activity called weaving that would be what so that would be 3x1 for, for weaving that would be 3x1 and then uh, for certain that is 4x2 okay and then that would be 4, 3x3 that will be less than or equal to 3600 so uh, like the way uh, you write the constraint for weaving you can write the constraint for processing you can write the constraint for packing all this i think you can easily do guys Okay, so I'll I'll make a separate video. I'll make a separate video where I'll discuss these problems. If if you want, I can discuss this problem right now. But I don't want that feeling in your mind that sir is doing same kind of questions again, 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 again. So that's why I thought I'll make a separate video where I'll discuss the remaining problems of LPP because already I gave you an idea about how the LPP problem comes in exam. If it comes, how you can solve them? This, 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 the same question. You can see the same question came already in your exam. And one difference is there. So your objective function here, here your objective function is maxima of z is equal to. Okay, you may objective function maximum of z is equal to two x one plus four x two. Where subject to what all constraint you have subject to your constraints are x1 plus 2 x2 is less than or equal to 2000 and then x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 1500 and x2 should be x2 should be a great minimum of 600 should be either equal or greater than 600 or where x1 x2 should be greater than or equal to zero. so already uh, we have discussed this kind of problem i think you are in that stage that you can easily create the equation for this problem anyone have any doubt anyone anyone have any doubt anyone want to say anything i believe by this time you are in the stage that you can easily create the equation for these kind of problem yes or no so we have learned about linear programming we have learned how to set an equation for the linear programming problems we have learned how to set an equation for the linear programming problem then uh, 
uh, going further, if I talk about the limitation of operation research, so the problem with the subject operation research is that uh, many times uh, these operation research models are very complex and that which cannot be solved without the use of computer. Okay, and then the solution what is obtained from this model are very difficult to explain to the managers because what happens uh, with this subject that you know that uh, mathematical model formulation and solving those mathematical models are very cumbersome exercise. So you need to have a, a, a strategist or, or mathematician who can formulate a mathematical model for the given set of problems then he or she will solve the problem by using computer models. And once he or she get the answer from, for that problem, then, uh, then for, for explaining that, that solution of the problem to the management uh, would be a difficult task. And probably if the management will not able to understand uh, what was this problem, how this problem is being solved mathematically, then uh, working on that problem in real day-to-day -day life uh, uh, from the management side is difficult to work on. So, so, so how the, the management can actually use the solution of that mathematical problem in real day-to-day -day life is very difficult to work on. Okay, and then uh, the other limitation of operation research can be the, that when, uh, when the basic data of where on which we are working on operation research, if they're subject to frequent changes, okay, then incorporating them into operation research model is very costly affair. So imagine you know that whenever we, we talk about a problem, we have studied a lot of problems. Okay, we have, we have taken into consideration a lot of problems and, and we have learned how to create a mathematical model for this problem. So you know that for, for all these problems when we are solving, uh, we need to have a decision variable. That decision variable uh, we create uh, depending upon what the problem is all about. Imagine the, the, the real uh, life problem when, when an operation research strategist is trying to solve. In that, the, the problem what the operation research strategist is working on, maybe that for, the, the, the scenario of the problem is very dynamic. Okay, that maybe that is something related to stock market or maybe some other variables which are much dynamic in nature. Okay, which are much more changing with, with the period of time, then incorporating them uh, in the form of decision variable and trying to create an equation for the given scenario. And uh, that would be a very cumbersome work. And once that is done also, once suppose if that is done also, then, then, then also probably uh, if, if an operation research uh, strategist is working and, and ultimately if he or she could able to incorporate the given dynamic change in the real life problem, even then if that purple, even then if that is being tried, imagine even then after that, the, the scenario get again get changed, like the way it happens in the stock market. Every now and then we see a lot of changes around us. Then, then probably uh, constructing that mathematical model, putting that much time, effort, money will not make much sense, okay? So this is again very important uh, criteria or or expect which we need to look into also. So this limitation of operation research is very important for the exam also. The question came on the limitation of operation research. Anyone, any doubt, any question you want to ask from me? Anyone? So can you create a LPP problem model? So we discussed about the limitation of operation research in exam. Uh, you get a two marks question about limitation of operation research. Okay, so you should be prepared with this. Okay, so whenever you get uh, any problem uh, in, 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 in operation research, the first idea what comes in our mind is to formulate a linear programming uh, for, that, for that problem whenever we have like if you see a simple problem like question number 10 that a company is there, it has three operation, operational department which is weaving, processing and packing and, and they have capacity to produce three types of cloth. It is either shooting or shirting or woolen um, where uh, one unit of, of, of shooting uh, gives a profit of two rupees 
one unit of certain gives a profit of four rupees, while one unit of woolen gives a profit of three rupees. Uh, so the, we are talking of their profit per meter. Okay, so one minute of shooting if if you do because that is the end product. So three kind of processes is going on that is weaving, processing, and packing, and that result into three kinds of on end product that is either shooting or shirting or woolen. Okay, so then the profit of per meter of shooting, shirting, and woolen is given to us. So that we we'll use this profit data we we'll use to formulate the objective function. Okay. So, like suppose x1 a uh, meter here, not the unit. So, because they are talking the term of meter, so let x1 meter of shooting is is manufactured per week. Let x2 unit of 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 shirting is manufactured per week, and let x3 unit of of woolen is manufactured per week by the company. So, either they manufacture shooting or shirting or woolen. So uh, their their per unit profit is given to us. So with that, I'll make the objective function as two x one plus four x two plus three x three. Then they have given you the time frame for for the three manufacturing process. Either they are weaving or processing or packing, where the data is given to you that shoot, for shooting for one minute of shooting you require three minutes in weaving, two minutes in packing, and one minute in Two minutes in processing, one minute in packing. Similarly, they are given data for shutting. One meter of shutting require four minute in weaving, one minute in processing, three minute in packing. Similarly, woolen the data is given to you. So, so we uh, we use this data for constructing of constraints. So we use this data for constructing of constraint. These data are given in minute, and the final the constraint what you have per week. That is given in hour. So hour, you know that you need to convert them into minute. So when I talk about process like weaving, so the maximum hours it have is sixty hour. So the maximum it has is sixty hour. So sixty hour will be three six zero zero minutes. Similarly, forty hour means two four zero zero minutes. Similarly, eighty hour means eighty hours means four eight zero zero minutes. So that would be your constraint, and based on that. What I'll do, I'll create an LPP problem based on that. I'll create an LPP problem, and we'll get this as an our LPP. So we have learned about them. So for, for a given situation, how to formulate an LPP problem? The 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 very important tool what we use in operation research to construct a mathematical model for any problem, for construct a mathematical whenever we have. So to create a mathematical model for any problem is is to use the linear programming. So by using the linear programming, uh, we we create a mathematical model for any problem, and then uh, then uh, probably we need to know how to how to solve them. The next thing is that now I believe you have learned how to how to create a mathematical model for a LPP. Okay, and now the next thing comes how to solve them. Okay, so we have learned the formulation of LPP problem. Now we have learned how to create an LPP problem. I have discussed lot of problems and which of problems are pending like uh like push problem four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I if you want, I'll give you these questions. You can only write this and send me the answer. Whatever the answer you get, or I'll make a separate video where I discuss this problem with you people. And whatever works better for us, we'll do. So by this time, I think we have learned how to formulate an LPP problem. How to formulate an LPP problem? Now let's try to learn how to solve them. So now, now whenever we have an LPP problem, whenever uh, we have linear programming, whenever we have a linear programming problem, whenever we have. Linear programming problem. So, if you want to solve them, if you want to solve them, if you want to solve them, we can follow different methods. Uh, more or less, we follow graphical method to solve the linear programming problem. Whenever we are trying to solve the linear programming problem, we follow graphical method or we follow simplex method. So, if you are trying to solve a linear programming problem. If we are trying to solve a linear programming problem, we follow different methods. So you can either follow graphical method 
or you can follow simplex method to solve them. Okay, simplex method can be worked on any kind of variable. For graphical method, we can only work if we have two variable. So it only work. Graphical method can only work only work when we have two variable. When we have two variable. So if you have more than two variable, then you cannot use graphical method. Okay. So graphical method is an easy way to solve the given problem. Graphical method is the easy way. Okay. Uh, we can solve the given problem by, by using graphical method easily. So graphical method is there. By using it, we can solve the problem very easy. So many times when we have three variables and all, we cannot use graphical method to solve. That time we prefer uh, to solve the given problem by using simplex method. Okay, so one by one we learn uh, graphical method, we learn uh, simplex method. So uh, any doubt, any question you want to ask from me? So you can see in your question paper, every year you get a problem, you can see this. Solve this, solve the following LPP by using graphical method. So you can see that. So it's very common, the problems of graphical method. Every year it comes. So that you can see graphical method. So six marks problem it came. Then simplex method you can see it again came for six marks. So you can understand uh, the importance. So every year, whichever year question paper, if I open 16, 17, you will always find every year there will be a problem on graphical method. There will be a problem on simplex method. You can see this problem you have to solve it by graphical method so for every problem you can solve by simplex method but not every problem can be solved by graphical method here in this problem you can see you have three variable okay x1 x2 x3 now if we have three variable then you cannot solve it by graphical method but simplex by using simplex method you can solve any problem so i think by this time you have learned how to construct an lpc model so you have learned how to construct an LPP model. Once uh, you have an LPP model, once you have L once you have LPP model, so once you have an LPP model, then probably you should know also that uh, the okay mathematical formulation you got. Now how will you get the answer for that model? That also we need to learn. Okay, guys. So with that we are trying to learn here. I hope you people are understanding. So first I'll, I'll teach you how to solve a linear programming by using, uh, by using graphical method. Okay, everyone. Okay, so, so we learn how to solve a given problem so by using graphical method. So suppose this is the problem to so solve the following LPP. Suppose this question I'm trying to solve, solve the following LPP, solve the following LPP by graphical method, by graphical method, solve the following LPP by using graphical method. So this question I'm trying to solve guys, you pay attention. Suppose your objective function is minima of z is equal to 20x1 plus 10x2, that is your objective function, subject to constraint, you can write the constraint x1 plus 2x2 is less than or equal to 40, that is your first constraint, second constraint is 2x1 plus x2 is greater than or equal to 30. And your third constraint is 4x1 plus 3x2 is greater than or equal to 60, where your x1, your x2 should be greater than or equal to zero. Write down this problem. Write down this problem, we'll solve this problem. So, uh, so solve the following 
LPP by using graphical method. We are trying to solve this question. Okay, so uh, I believe you have written down this problem. So this is your objective function. You want to minimize the value of z. Till now, what we have learned, we have learned uh, to write this equation. Okay, so here I have written this equation. So till now, we have learned how to write this equation. So uh, here I have written the objective function. I've written the constraint and all. Now, how to solve this? So whenever no, you are trying to solve by using graphical method, so uh, you have in equations, you have this in equations. Okay, for the time being, think uh, this in equation as an equation. Okay, so focus on constraint, guys. So whenever you're trying to solve the problem by graphical method, whenever uh, we are trying to solve the problem, whenever, whenever, whenever we are, whenever we are trying to solve whenever we are trying to solve the problem whenever we are trying to solve the problem by graphical method whenever we are trying to solve the problem by using a graphical method whenever we are trying to solve the problem by using graphical method then then what you do then assume then assume the linear inequation of constraint then what you can do assume the linear inequation of constraint the linear inequation of constraint okay as a linear equation okay as a linear equation as a linear equation okay so whenever we are trying to solve the problem by using graphical method okay then what you can do uh, you assume that whatever the inequalities you have, whatever the inequalities you have for the time being, assume that as equal. Okay, so your first constraint is x1 plus 2, x2 less than equal to 40. So for the time being, assume that they're equal. So can I write then can I write the same constraint? So can I write the same constraint as like this for the time being to plot the graph? So x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 40. x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 40. Okay. Then second constraint, imagine they're equal, not unequal. Here they are unequal. Uh, with Whenever we are solving by LPP, we use inequality. So for the time being, assume that they're equal. So 3x1 plus x2 equal to 30. So 3x1, 3x1 plus x2 is equal to 30 3x1 plus x2 is equal to 30 and 4x1 plus 3x2 and 4x1 and 4x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 4x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 60. Suppose these are the three constraints. Uh, whenever we are trying to solve the problem uh, by using uh, by using what by using the graphical method whenever we are trying to solve the problem. I hope you are understanding that this is the given problem we have. This is the given problem what we have. We have learned how to create the uh, linear programming mathematical model for them. So once we have learned how to construct a linear programming a mathematical model for a given problem, then focus only on constraint. Focus uh, only on constraint and and try to create and rewrite the equation. Try to rewrite the equation ignoring the inequality sign okay can you do that can you rewrite the equation ignoring the inequality sign yes we can do that right we can rewrite the equation by ignoring the inequality sign so the three inequalities you had you had three inequalities okay so i write them again with the equal sign okay now what i'll do guys if you have studied coordinate geometry, uh, you know how to formulate the values x and y coordinate. Okay, so uh, now what I'll try to do, I plot a graph. Okay, this graph, this this is origin. Okay, let, this is x coordinate. Let, let this one is x1 coordinate. Let this is x2 coordinate. I hope you are understanding. Here the pause. Here I, the positive value of x1. Is written here the positive value of x1 is written here the negative value of x1 is written like this you have done all this in your schooling time so one two like this i can 
plot a graph, I can use graph paper minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, like this. Okay. And then what I'll do, please understand their linear equation. Please understand they are linear equation. And whenever you talk about linear equation, linear equation form a straight line curve. Okay. So we'll try to plot a straight line curve uh, for these three equations. We have three equations. So for this three equation, I, what I'll try to do, I'll try to plot for these three equations. What I'll try to do for these three equations, I'll try to plot a straight line curve. Okay. So how to plot a straight line curve for this equation? Uh, very easy. Uh, so this put x1 0. So the value of x2 you will get is 20, right? Similarly, if you put x2 0, the value of x1 you will get 40, right? So like this, uh, you can find the value of x1 and x2. You can see, guys, understand you have this equation x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 40. So this equation, this equation have infinite solution. Please understand this equation have infinite solution. This equation have infinite solution. This equation x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 40. This equation have infinite solutions. You can put any value of x1. Simultaneously, you will get the, the value of x2. So if you put x1 equal to 0, the, the if you put x1 equal to 0, you will get x2 value equal to 20. If you put x1 equal to 1, then x2 value will be 39 by 2. I hope you understand me. If you put x1 as 2, then x2 value will be what? 19. I hope you people are are understanding simple. You can put any value of x1. If you put x1 3, then x2 value will be 37 by 2. If you put x1 as 4, then x2 value will be 18. So you can put any value of x1, you can get the value of x2. You can put any value of x2, you will get the value of x1. So infinite solutions are possible uh, for this given set of line. That's x1 plus 2 x2 equal to 40. It is a linear equation. If you know basics of maths also, you know that for a linear equation, the curve, the, the graph, if you plot, that will be straight line graph. For a linear equation, uh, you will get a straight line graph. So what you do, you just need to find two, two coordinates for the equation. For every equation, you just need to find two coordinates. Okay. So how I finding the two coordinate? I'm putting x1, 0. So I'll, I'll take equation, whatever is the equation, I'm writing the equation. So x1 plus 2x2 equal to 40. So, so I'm writing let x1 0. So if x1 is 0, then 0 plus 2x2 is 40. So then x2 is equal to 20. Similarly, then I'm putting let x2 equal to 0. So x1 plus 2 into 0 is 40. So x1 is equal to 40. So I hope you understand me. And when I'm writing this, whenever I write like this, so first I'll write x1 value, then I'll write x2 value. So this is what I'm trying to do. So you can any put you can put any point. The infinite solutions are possible for a given equation. You have infinite solutions. Okay. So one two of the infinite solutions you simply write, then your work is done. Similarly for this equation. Similarly uh, for this equation. When we have this equation, 3x1 plus x2 equal to 30. I'll put this as x1 is 0, then x2 would be 30. If I put x2 as 0, then x1 will be 10. Okay. Similarly, for the third equation, if I put x1 0, then x2 is 20. And similarly, if I put x2 0, then x1 will be 15. Any doubt, anyone? So you can put any value of x1, you get the simultaneous value of x2. You can put any value of x2, you can get the simultaneous value of x1. So I hope you people are understanding. So suppose your equation is 4x1 plus 3x2 equal to 60. So let, uh, let x1 is 0. If x1 is 0, then 4 into 0. Plus 3x2 is equal to 60. So 3x2 is equal to 60. So x2 is equal to 20. 
So if x1 is 0, then x2 is 20. I hope you people are understanding very well. Similarly, for the same equation, 4x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 60. So let x2 is 0. So 4 into x1 plus 3 into 0 is equal to 60. So 4x1 is equal to 60. So x1 is equal to 50. Clear, no, everyone? So whenever I'm writing the values, first I'm writing the value of x1 coordinate, then I'm writing the value of x2 coordinates. So the purpose of converting uh, this inequation, the purpose of converting, you had this inequation, then what you did, you converted those inequation into linear equation. The why we converted this, because I wanted the coordinate. I wanted the coordinate, at least two coordinate. If I get, I can easily plot the graph. Okay, now I can easily plot the graph of them. So I can easily plot the graph, at least if I get the two coordinates, I can easily plot the graph of them. So let's suppose this is 0, 0, this is 5, uh, this is 10, this is 15, this is 20, this is 25, this is 30, like this is suppose 5, this is 10, this is 15, this is 20, okay. Then this is, then this is 25, like this. So the, here, urgently, when I'm writing, so urgently, the value what I'm writing, these are, these are x1 coordinate, this is x1 coordinate. Okay, urgently, what are the values you write? And these are x2 coordinates. I think if you have done coordinate geometry and in maths, then past you would have understood this. So this is minus 5. This is minus 10. Last semester, you have the last chapter. No? With that was coordinate geometry and in maths. This was minus 5. Uh, this is minus 10 like this. This is minus 20. Okay, guys. So now what you do see the first equation, what is the coordinate of the first equation that is for first equation, the coordinate is 0, 20, 40, 0, 0, 20, 40, 0, 0, 20 means what, what is 0, 20, 0, 20, this is 0, 20, so x1, 0, x2, 20, 0, 20, x1, 0, x2, 20. 0, 20 and and x and the next next one is 40 comma 0 40 comma 0 next one is 40 comma 0 next one is 40 comma 0 so 40 comma 0 means x1 is 40 and x2 is 0 clear so i got the two coordinate 0 comma 20 40 comma 0 so i got the two coordinate now what i'll do i'll draw a line on that coordinate, I'll draw a line. Let me just draw the line. I'll keep my scale like this. And then I'll draw a line on this. One. So this line at all. So this this is basically the line of what? This is basically the line of the equation. What is which equation is this? X1 plus 2 x2 equal to 40. This line is basically of which equation? X1 plus 2 x2 equal to 40. Can you understand this? This line what I've drawn that is for which equation? X1 plus 2 x2 equal to 40. Can you understand this? This line is basically of which equation? x1 plus x2 equal to 40. So if you have studied linear equation of coordinate geometry in your schooling, 
uh, 9th, 10th, you can easily understand what I'm talking. It's a very simple thing I'm talking about. Now, but in reality, but in reality, your equation, if you see in reality that the equation was not this. This I simply wrote to draw a line. So I have drawn the line. In my reality, my equation is this. x1 plus 2x2 is less than or equal to 40. So I know what I know. I know what I know. This in reality, this is my real equation. x1 and x2 is greater than or equal to 0. So this is, this is the real value. So the x1 and x2 is less than or equal to 40. And x1 and x2 are 0. Are 0 or greater than 0. So this means this mean the values what I'm considering that is inside this range. I hope you understand. The value what I'm considering is actually inside this range. Okay, so this is what x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 40 and an x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to 0. So that corresponds to this region because an x1 x2 should be greater than or equal to 0. So th this, this is the area. Imagine if you imagine imagine if your graph if your graph was x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 40 then your area would have been this. Then your area would have been this. Then your area would have been this. I hope you understand that. Beyond that. Clear everyone? So this is this was your first equation. This was your first equation. So we like this, we have three equations like this. Uh, we have three equations. This was your first equation. Okay, and this was your first equation. I have written down my first equation. I have written down my first equation. Now, can I write the other two equations? So, can I plot the graph of other two equations? 0, 30, uh, 0, 30, 0, 30, 0, 30, 0, 30. Okay. This is 0, 30, 0, 30. This is 0, 30. Okay, then 0, 30 and then 10, 0. Next one is 0, 30 and then 10, 0. Can you understand this? 0, 30 and then 10, 0. Okay, next equation. These are the coordinates. Now, again, I'll draw the line on this equation. Now, again, one. Zero comma thirty ten comma zero. This is your second equation. What is this equation? The equation is, if you see your second equation is 3x1 plus x2 is equal to 30. So this is this, this line what you have drawn, you have drawn the line of 3x1 plus x2 is equal to 30. So the line what you have drawn, you have drawn the line for what? You have drawn the line for 3x1, 3x1 plus x2 equal to 30. Okay, but in reality, what is your what is your real equation? 3x1 plus x2 is greater than or equal to 30. Your real graph is 3x1 plus x2 is greater than or equal to 30. I hope you understand it. Now, greater than or equal to 30 means what? Greater than or equal to 30 means what? So if I talk greater than or equal to 30 means what? It means it means all the area beyond it, all the area beyond all the area beyond greater than i hope you understand it. all the area beyond it all the area which is beyond this because you know next thing you know that 
and x1 and x2 should be greater than or equal to 0. We you know that x1 and x2 should be greater than or equal to 0, so cannot, A cannot be negated. All the area beyond this, all the area beyond this, all the area beyond this line is the part of the equation, this infinite area. I hope you understand. It is all this infinite area is a part of this. I hope you understand. Now, now guys, what you need to understand the two uh, 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 the region of two line I have tried to determine. Uh, so I hope you understand the region of two line I try to determine. So first one was less than or equal to, next one is greater than or equal to. So you feasible region basically means that region, the feasible region, if you want to know, what is your feasible region? Your feasible region is actually that region which is common in both the graph. Now try to find that region. Now try to find that region which is common in both the graph. Okay, that is your feasible region. So for, for both the region, what I try to do, I'll try to find the, the common region. What is the common region? Okay, so common region, so the common region for both the graph is this. I hope you understand. So this is the common region for both the graph. I hope you people can understand. So if I had two equations only, you know, then this would have been a feasible region. What we are trying to do here, uh, we are trying to find the feasible region, the area which is common for all the graph. Okay, so till now, this is your feasible region. So till now, this is your feasible region. Then now this is your feasible region. Clear everyone? Now I now one more graph is pending. One more graph is pending. Third equation 4x1 plus x2, uh, 4x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 60. And the uh, representation is 0, 20, 15, 0. 0, 20, 0, 20. This is uh, 0, 20 and 15, 0. And 15, 0. Can you understand this? Now, third one, the points are the points of coordinate are 0, 20 and 15, 0. Now, for them, again, I have to plot a graph. Imagine. imagine if I draw the line. So this is your third equation. So this is your third equation. This is your third equation. So this blue color, this blue color was which equation? Blue color was 3x1 plus x2. This blue color is 3x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to, sorry, greater than or equal to 30. 3x1 plus x2 is greater than or equal to 30. Red color means, uh, red color means, uh, red color here means 0, 20, 15. All you get is 4x1 uh, plus 3x2 is equal to uh, not equal is all carry inequality sign it is greater than equal to 60 it is greater than or equal to 60 now the question arise uh, now the question arise what would be the greater than means what would be your feasible region guys if you think about your feasible region if you think about your feasible uh, region what would be your feasible region if i try to find your line. So your feasible region for the third, so for the third equation, this this all would be the feasible region. Okay. So now if you try to find the area which is common between all the three lines, if you try to find the area which is common between all the three lines, will be this point. I think you can understand this. The area which is common, the area which is common between all the three points 
will be this. Can you understand this? A, B, then C, then D. Any confusion in anyone? So this, this is called as, now this region, what you see, this is called as feasible region. So the, you have to find the area which is common between all the points, between all the graph. So whenever you have less than or greater than sign, based upon that, you will find the area. Okay, so imagine, imagine you drawn this, suppose, suppose this is 40, 0 and 0, 40, simply I'm writing, okay. So x1, so if I say x1 plus x2 equal to 40, so this is your graph. If I say x1 plus x2 greater than equal to 40, greater than equal to 40, means what would be your region? What would be your region? Your region greater than equal to 40. This would be your region. Okay, if I'm supposed to saying the equation as x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 40. So then what would be your region? If I say less than or equal to 40. Then your region will fit this. Okay, always you have to remember that your x1 and x2 are basically greater than or equal to 0. Can you understand this? I ask any doubt? Anyone any doubt? This part is clear. So once you get the feasible region, find the coordinate. Find the once you get the feasible region. Find the coordinate of the feasible region. So the, the that the coordinate of the feasible region is called as corner point. Find the coordinate of the feasible region, which we called as corner point. Find the coordinate of feasible region. You call that a corner point, like point C. What is the coordinate for point C? 15 comma 0. Point D, what is the coordinate of point D? Uh, 40 comma 0. Then you have coordinate, then you have point A, you have point B. Can you understand this? So your corner points, uh, your corner points are A, B, C, D. I don't know this, what is the coordinate of this? I don't know what is the coordinate of this. I have no idea. What is the coordinate of this? I have no idea what is the coordinate of this. Okay, so I can find the coordinate. Okay, so A, if you see A, A is basically the intersection. A is basically the intersection of, of A is basically point A is the intersection of two lines. What are the two lines? 3x1 plus x2 uh, uh, equal to 30 and x1 plus x2 equal to 40. So if you solve them, you will get the point A. So A, if you have done basic maths, you know how to find that. When you say point A, when you say point A, point A is the intersection. Point A is the intersection of two lines. Point A is the intersection of two lines. What are the two lines? So point A is the intersection of two lines. X1 plus X2 equal to 40. And the next line is 3x1 plus x2 equal to 30. 3x1, next line is x1 and x2 equal to 40. Point A is basically the intersection of two lines x1 plus 2x2 equal to 40. 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 x1 plus 2x2 is equal to 40 and then and then it is an intersection of it is a 3x1 plus x2 greater than equal to 30 so 3x1 plus x2 3x1 plus x2 equal to 30 can you understand this so point a is basically the intersection of these two lines so imagine you know how to solve linear equation so imagine if i solve this equation i'll get the value of 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 point a and point A coordinates, suppose this is your equation 1, this is your equation 2, multiply um, this equation 2. Simply I know, I hope you know how to solve linear equation. So if I multiply 2 with equation so 2 into 3x1 plus x2 equal to 30, 
and x1 plus 2x2 equal to 40. I just need to solve this equation. So if I solve this, I'll get 6x1 plus 2x2 equal to 60. Okay, then uh, then x1 plus 2x2 equal to 50. So you multiply the two with this equation, you multiply the two with this equation, uh, you will get this, and this is the first equation. You subtract this, so you will get the value of x1. 5x1 is equal to 20. So the value of x1 is equal to 4. So once you get the value of x1 equal to 4, you put this in any equation, either 1 or either 2, x1 plus 2, x2 equal to 40, and x1 is equal to 4. So 4 plus 2, x2 equal to 50. So 2, x2 is equal to 36. So x2 equal to 80. I'll get the value of, of point A. Point A equal to 4 comma 18. So point A is equal to point A is equal to 4 comma 18. Can you understand this? So you can get the coordinates point A is equal to 4 comma 18 because you got to know that point A is actually you get by the intersection. You get the point A by the intersection of two points, sorry, by the intersection of two lines. So you solve the, the two equations, the, the equations of two lines, you get the coordinates. Similarly, I'll get the point B coordinate. Point B is actually the intersection of two lines. What are the two lines? Uh, this red line and this blue line. So red is basically this equation. And blue is basically this equation. So I just need to solve these two equations to find the coordinate of point B. So when I say point B, so point B is the intersection. Intersection point B is the intersection of two lines. Point B is the intersection of two lines. What are the two lines we have? We have 3x1 plus x2. 3x1 plus x2 equal to 30. And we have second equation 4x1 plus 3x2 equal to 60. Now let this equation 4, let this equation 5. Okay, so to cancel, I can either cancel x1, either I can cancel x2. For me, cancelling x2 is easy. So what I will do? So multiply, multiply three with equation four. Multiply three with equation four. So what we'll get? So we'll get what? So if I multiply three with, if you multiply three with equation four, so so what we'll get? So we'll get we'll get a nine x one plus three x two equal to ninety. Let this equal equation six. Okay. So now, so I have two equations. I have equation nine x one plus three x two equal to ninety. One equation. Second equation is four x one plus three x two equal to sixty. I just solve them to get the answer. I can cancel x2, x2. So 5x1 is equal to 30. x1 is equal to 6. So once I get x1 equal to 6, so I'll put this value in any equation, doesn't matter. So put x1 equal to 6. In either equation 4 or equation 5. Equation 4 or equation 5. Okay. And get get x2 value and get x2 value. Okay. So in equation you say 3x1 plus x2 equal to 30. So 3x1 plus x2 equal to 30. x1 is equal to 6. 30. So 18 plus x2 is equal to 30. So x2 is equal to 12. So you get x16 and x2 equal to 6. x16, x2 equal to 12 x16 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 here x16 x2 equal to 12 so now you get these as a these these coordinates what you get no so that we called as a corner point and your objective function here was to minimize the value of z so what is your equation 
z what is the minima what you wanted to minimize 20x1 plus 10x2 that is your objective function 20x1 plus 10x2 20x1 20x1 plus 10x2 I put that values here so what is the value 20 into 15 plus 10 into 0 we will get 300 then this is 20 into 40 plus 10 into 0 we will get 800 then this is 20 into 4 plus 10 into 18 this is 18 plus 180 we will get 260 then this is 20 into 6 plus 10 into 12 this will be 240 so out of this which is the minimum value guys what is the which value is minimum which value is minimum because you wanted to minimize right so we will find the minimum value so this is your minimum value right this is your minimum value right now this is your minimum value right 6 comma 12 then this is your final answer so for this equation now now for this equation now the i now for this equation now for the equation now for the equation for the equation for minimum of z is equal to 20x1 plus 40x2 subject to constraint subject to you had a constraint called x1 plus 2x2 less than equal to 40 and 3x1 plus x2 greater than equal to 30 and then 4x1 plus 3x2 greater than equal to 60 where x1 x2 greater than equal to 0 so the answer you are getting that, that x1 is equal to 6 the answer is x1 equal to 6 x1 equal to 6 x2 equal to 12 the minimum value of z you are getting is two four. This is your final answer. This is your final answer. So, any doubt? Anyone? Any doubt? Any question you want to ask for me? So one, uh, you will get one question uh, on graphical method, hundred percent in your exam. Uh, you will get one question on graphical method, hundred percent. So you should be in position that you you should be able to solve when you see that question in exam. So with this intention, I like to wind up the class. Anyone, any doubt, please ask me. If you have no doubt, then I'll see you all in next class. Till then, be very safe. And I'll see you in next class. Take care, bye.